I don't do any marketing on Facebook, Instagram, or even TikTok. For me, what's worked is creating and publishing consistently on YouTube, which I've been doing for the last eight to nine years. Now today, I'm gonna to take you behind the scenes and we're gonna record an actual video. I'm gonna explain how I set up my office, uh, the equipment I use, the software we use for recording and editing, how we publish, and next week, you'll actually be able to watch the video that we record today. Stick around to the end of the video where I will explain why I think YouTube has been such a powerful marketing tool for my business. But for now, let's get straight into the video. So stage one, ideation and planning. Now, when either I or John, my cameraman and editor has an idea for our video, we put that idea into Asana, as you can imagine. We make a lot of videos about Asana. It's naturally where we plan uh, all the videos that we're gonna create. We have a content project in Asana and we use task templates. So whenever we have an idea, we use that template to create a new task and that way we've got all of our subtasks that outlines our process ready to go. We set the name of the task as the title of what we think the title of the video is going to be, but we'll often change that later. And we put our initial ideas and anything we want to say into the task description, and we'll just kind of bullet out the talking points and topics that we want to cover. Um, we have lots of ideas in here, and not all of these tasks will end up as finished videos. Um, for example, we've, I had this idea a little while ago to create a Bitcoin explainer video. Bitcoin is something I enjoy learning about personally and I feel I have a, a good ability to explain things clearly, so I thought maybe I'll do a video on that. If that is something you want me to make a video on, leave me a comment down below. On the day of recording, I will look at the task description and all my notes one more time. Often I'll rearrange the bullet points to make sure that the video has a logical flow. I'll check the hook or different calls to action and I don't really work off a script. I, I'm happy with bullet points because I'm fairly comfortable talking ad hoc on camera. So here's the video we're gonna make today. I'm gonna do a video on how to use tabs in Asana. I've got my Asana task ready to go. I've already, we finished that ideation process now. I've got my bullet points and everything I want to talk about ready to go. So stage two now is to set up the office and get ready for recording. So let's talk about equipment. Um, so to record the talking head, the intro, I'm actually gonna do all of that on my iPhone. For our more vlog style videos like this one, John's using his nice fancy camera, but for my screencast videos where I'm on my own, I actually just record on my iPhone 16 Pro. It has a great camera, and if it's on a tripod, you can get really nice still shots. I use a pretty simple uh, small rig um, tripod. I think this was about $120, pretty, pretty cheap and cheerful. Um, so I'll just get the phone straightened up a little bit here. Oh, and by the way, if you like videos like this where we take you behind the scenes and I show you how I do things in my business, then hit like and subscribe so that way I know you wanna see more videos like this. Okay, so with the phone on the tripod ready to go, I need to connect it to my MacBook. Now to do that, I'm gonna plug in using a Thunderbolt 4 cable and I've got a really nice long three meter cable. This is the really expensive one that you buy from Apple. I think this was about 270 New Zealand dollars. The reason I went with the three meter is because it gives me lots of flexibility. So I can move the tripod around the office. I can basically position it anywhere in here and I can get different shots um, that I might need. The reason I prefer a wired connection is it's just more reliable than recording wirelessly. It also means I don't have to transfer any files to my Mac later because um, I'm recording directly from the phone through the monitor into my Mac. That way the file saves directly on my computer and I'm not having to airdrop them or copy the files wirelessly, which would take longer. For my audio, I use the Rode NT-USB Mini here on my desk. This is actually the mic I use just for my daily Zoom calls. It's a great mic for video conferencing, for podcasting, or making videos like this. And again, this is going into the Dell monitor and then into the Mac. So this, this monitor really is the hub that all the, um, that really the phone and the mic is plugged into. 
Now, one of the cool things about this screen is, and I'm actually, again, I'm using a longer cable here because on in my screencast videos, I'm often holding the mic like this and the cable from the back isn't long enough. So I'm plugging in this slightly longer cable. And one of the cool things that we have on this Dell display is this little pop-out USB hub. So I can plug that mic directly in there. And now I've got lots of room to move around with the mic. For more of these vlog style videos, I use the DJI lapel mic, which is connecting to John's camera. Um, I don't really use that for these screencasting uh, videos that I'm, I'm really just using the Rode NT-USB mini for those ones. Okay, so I'm ready to record my first shot. I framed up the shot. I can see it looks good. I'm happy with the lighting. Uh, next thing to do is I'm gonna click to focus on myself. I'm gonna hit record in camo and I'm just gonna hide the camo recording window so that the camera doesn't see it. Get my mic ready to go and let's see if we can get a good shot. Our clients love when we share little hacks in Asana and today's tip is one of my favorites. I'm gonna show you a handy little trick where you can take a project with lots and lots of tasks and create additional views or layouts that you prefer to work from. Okay, so that was uh, pretty good. I think I could make that a little bit better. So I might just record that one or two more times to see if I could improve. Okay, I'm pretty happy actually with that first take that we did. I did do one more, but I think the first one actually worked out really well. So now what I'm gonna do is start a new ScreenFlow file. ScreenFlow is the app, uh, this is a Mac only application, um, and it's what I use for both recording in, because it can record your screen, and it's what we use for editing. It's what allows you to do some of the nice effects like zooming in on parts of the screen or blurring parts of the screen if you need to. Um, so I can just simply drag that file, the camo recording that we got, straight into here. And again, this is one of the great things about this particular setup. I've recorded straight from my phone onto the Mac. I can get that file straight into ScreenFlow. I'm not juggling files, copying them around and waiting for them to transfer. Recording like this really does speed up production in a significant way. So from here, I basically just do one shot at a time, either recording on the iPhone or on the screen, and I add them, the shots, to ScreenFlow, and I build up the file or the, the movie, the, the video that we're making shot by shot. I like recording it that way because then I can check the shots as I go. I'm also checking to make sure that is it coming out clearly? Have I explained the feature or topic well? Uh, and just by watching it back, I can I can decide if I need to re-record and redo the shot before moving on. So I'll do that now. Um, my next, actually, let's go back to my talking points. Um, I now need to introduce the video. I'm gonna talk about how um, you can create these different layouts in Asana. Uh, this was really difficult a few years ago, so I'm gonna set up the video a little bit more before I get into the actual screencasting side of things. Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of our Asana training videos. Now, when you set up a project in Asana, you can choose from multiple layouts uh, to just... Bleh. See, I just screwed that up. Just keep rolling, just go again. It's the best thing to do. And then you can, you can cut out the junk in the edit. Okay, let's try that again. Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of our Asana training videos. Now, when you set up a... Now, a few years ago, Actually, I'm gonna pause there. I think what I'll do next is I'm gonna move, I'm gonna change the shot and I'm just gonna move my tripod around and get a slightly different angle. So I'll just make that change quickly. And let's just bring this round a little bit and I can check my shot there. I can refocus, record, and I'm just gonna keep going. What was my last line? Do you remember what it was, John? Now, a few years ago, if you wanted to create different views or layouts in Asana, now I'm gonna stop one more time. Stop that one, I'm gonna go back to where I was. And keep going. Now, hang on, I'm gonna go from here. Now, we can create additional views and layouts in the same project by cre- <laughs> Now, we can create new views Okay, so that was me recording a, a couple of shots there. You can see I made some mistakes as we went. Um, if I make a mistake, best thing to do is keep rolling. Just pause, take a nice pause, 
so that you can uh, reset. It also makes editing easier um, to have that pause, take a breath and go again. And then at the end of the shot, you'll notice as well, um, once I finish my last line, I keep looking at the camera and I just hold that, that eye contact a little bit longer. Actually, that's one more thing. I'm looking at the camera lens. Um, that just means that when somebody's viewing it on YouTube, it basically looks like I'm looking at them in the eyes like I am right now. So for this next shot, I'm going to be doing a screen casting shot where I'm actually showing what's on my screen. And I'm going to have a little picture in picture of me so people can see me talking. For that, I'm going to be using my webcam. This is the Logitech Brio, which is a 4K webcam. I'm still using my Rode NT-USB Mini for the audio. Uh, it's just much better quality. And because I'm not using the iPhone for this shot, I don't need to use the Camo software. Instead, I'm going to be recording using ScreenFlow, and I will be recording directly into the timeline. So let me show you how I do that. So to record directly into ScreenFlow, I can, with just with the file open, I can come up to this uh, the um, plus button up here and add a recording. I can then choose my different input sources. So we're recording the screen. You can see it's got my Dell monitor as a recording source. Uh, I've got the uh, Rode NT-USB Mini as my microphone. I can see myself talking there. And the Logitech Brio camera. I've got a little preview. Whoops. There we go. There's my little preview so I can see what the shot looks like. Um, I'm not going to record the entire screen. I'm going to choose this little option instead. So I can click that button and I can position the recording frame and I can choose the resolution and aspect ratio that I want. So I'm happy with that. I can click record. ScreenFlow is going to count down from three. Just minimize that. And you can see ScreenFlow is just recording this box here where I've got my Asana window open, the, the webcam, my audio, and I can basically just start recording and talking to the camera. So I finished recording now. I've got my the shots from my iPhone in here, the talking headshots as I refer to them. Uh, you can see these are the shots of the um, screencast. So there's the picture in picture from the webcam and the recording of my Mac display. Sometimes I'm cutting back to the iPhone camera as well. Um, and so that's that's roughly the video done now. I've also, as I've been recording, I've been trimming out some of the bad takes that I that I made um, just to make John's job of editing that much easier. There's obviously still a lot to do. He'll cut out some of the ums and ahs and there's some other takes that he'll choose from. He'll also add the other effects, um, the, the subscribe GIF and other animations and things that we need to put in. But essentially now I can save that and that could be handed over ready for editing. To share the file with John for editing, we have a shared iCloud Drive folder. So this is our folder called video editing. We have folders here, subfolders for each video that we're working on. And so this is the one that I just recorded. There's the screen flow file. And so John would just need to open this on his computer. He can see all the recordings that I've done, all the shots in that file ready to go. So now my part is almost done. I really just want to do the recording and then hand it over to John so that he can get everything ready to publish. Uh, my, the final thing that I do is I come here in Asana. Um, I can check off my subtask now. Recording the video and short is done. Actually, you didn't see that part, but we will record a short as well. Uh, so we want to publish this video on July 22nd. So these subtasks here, editing the video, creating the YouTube thumbnail, setting up the cards, the description, the ad breaks, that's all going to get assigned to John. And we usually have that ready kind of like the Thursday before. So I'll say July 17th, and I'm going to assign all of those to John. So he gets all those tasks now. He'll, he'll take over from here. Uh, some of these other tasks, um, drafting the WordPress post, the broadcast, these go to Judy on my team. Uh, she does those a day later. Those go to Judy. And actually approving the, the broadcast in kit, that one will be assigned to me. And actually, John has one more task here. He will schedule the video, um, the, the WordPress post, and the newsletter. So he'll do that the Monday before we publish. I'll assign that to John as well. So that's it. I've handed everything over to my team now. Obviously, Asana is a vital part of our process. Uh, again, this is the benefit of having task templates with all the steps that we need to complete. The reason I'm assigning these tasks now and I didn't have these assigned earlier is because I don't want John and Judy to have the tasks while they're not ready to be worked on. So 
I only assign them once my part, the recording is done. I can then hand it over, they get their tasks and they know that they can actually get started on them. They're not waiting on me anymore. So with recording done, we're now entering stage four, which is post-production and publishing. Now I just need to share the file with John so that he can get started on editing. And I've got a bunch of subtasks to assign to my team so that we can get the video ready to share. Okay, recording two videos at once was a lot more confusing than I thought it would be, but I really hope that comes out clearly and it makes sense, kind of the process we go through. I'm sure John will do a great job in the edit. So why YouTube? I said I would come back to this. So when I started my business, I was thinking, how can I attract my target customers? Obviously, there's lots of different social media platforms. And I thought, well, putting myself in the mind of our target customer, people who are signing up for tools like Asana and Zapier and Pipedrive, they're going to go to a tool like YouTube to learn how to use these programs. And so I thought, let me be on YouTube. Let's get some content out there and provide value first so that, number one, I can get discovered. You know, they go to YouTube, they see me, they realize, oh, look, there's people out there like Paul and his company who can actually help us with this tool. The great thing about providing value uh, on a tool like YouTube is that you actually build a lot of credibility. So I've had people come to me and they say, Paul, I've watched loads of your videos. Um, it's obviously clear that you know what you're talking about and we want you to help our business roll out Asana to our team. And so that way, when they book an introductory call with me or my team, that prospect is coming to us very warm because we've built that credibility, we've built that trust. And so actually then selling our services is a lot easier and quicker because we've already built so much trust. A couple of other reasons I like making videos for YouTube. Um, it's fun, I enjoy it, and I think it suits my personality. I've been making home videos since I was a lot younger when we had a little camcorder and you actually had to record onto tapes. Um, that was a lot more difficult. And I, you know, I did drama at school. I quite like kind of presenting and acting a little bit. Yeah, video just suits my personality. The other nice benefit of making videos for YouTube is it actually generates revenue for the business. Now it is the harder, one of the harder forms of marketing you can do. And a quick and easy way to get leads is to pay for ads on Facebook or Instagram and get leads to your business. Making content is a lot more work, but I feel it's more rewarding over the long run. In a way, we're actually getting paid by YouTube to generate leads for the business, which we earn revenue from for our services. So it's kind of like a two-pronged benefit. And of course, that ad revenue helps finance the channel. So I can pay people like John to help with production and editing. It helps finance new gear so that we can make more videos and produce more value to people like you. So I hope this has been insightful, learning and going behind the scenes as to how um, we make videos. Obviously, the way I do it might be quite different to the way you do it. I've got a very particular setup, and but but this is what works for me, and this is also the the result of years of making videos and refining the process. If you go back and look at some of my very early videos, I'm actually embarrassed at the quality, um, but it's all part of the journey. You have to kind of suck in the beginning to get good and to learn and improve. So if you are interested in making YouTube videos, my, my main tip would just be to get going. You can work up to a setup like this and you, you'll refine your process as you go. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.